crying kid, barking dog, loud blender. Welcome to my house. What's going on guys? We're gonna hang out today. I'm gonna take you through a day in life. Gonna get some coffee, then I got some stuff going on today. So we got some team calls, uh, a mock role play with a new sales rep we're hiring. Uh, got a workout, I'm gonna bring you on that. And then there's a lot of stuff happening around the house today. So pool guys are here, landscapers are coming, installing some security cameras, new pool heaters. There's just a lot of stuff going on. So it should be a fun day. Hey, I know you. What's up, buddy? So this is where I make my coffee. My coffee of choice, just in case you're wondering, is, I don't even know if you, like, you can tell we're a little bit enjoying the Nespresso. There's a bunch of them up there. So this one here, Tokyo Lungo, this is what I go for. And then this is the Addicts coffee drawer. So I have about two of these a day. Two's good, three on toast. This is my start to the day. Actually, you know what? This is my second thing of the day. I usually start with about a liter of water and then I have one or two of these and then, uh, then I'm good. So I don't really have any food for the most part. Start with a protein shake maybe, but other than that, it starts with this. Then I head over to the office. I'll take you there in a bit. What's up, buddy? Julian FM, all music all the time. The eavesdrops, see if they're like, uh, they need some cleaning. These guys, we gotta get that all cleaned up, right? See how much stuff there is there? Whoa, that's amazing. You, know, you can see in everyone's backyards. <laughs> so, I'm, <laughs> I gotta take the light out of the car. So this actually f fell out a couple days ago and it was like just dangling. So we're going on a rally on Saturday, so I gotta make sure this is fixed properly, otherwise it's gonna go all over the place. All right, so <laughs> Amy is the resident uh, fixer-upper. So she's gonna work her crazy glue magic here. So it's not clicking in. Yeah. Well, there you go. Right. Time will tell. <laughs> Most of what I do on a daily basis is actually just supporting my team. So at the moment, reviewing a few sales calls a week, uh, providing feedback for our enrollment coaches. When I started Healthpreneur, I did all the calls, right? So like every enrollment call, you know, five to six hours a day, and then I was like, toast. So after doing that for a long time, I eventually hired another person and then another one. Uh, but here's the thing is like, I think a big mistake I see a lot of people make is they don't wanna do sales calls because they don't like it. And so then they hire someone to do it for them, who by the way, is never gonna be as good of a salesperson as you because it's your product. And then they just kind of let them do their thing, right? They don't want to coach and mentor them. And it's, I think it's a really, really big mistake that can cause your business a tremendous amount of money and time. And so the way I look at this is like every moment, every minute I spend with my team and coaching, mentoring, et cetera, is going to buy me back hundreds of hours in the future. Uh, and again, like I'm not, there's definitely some areas where I dropped the ball big time in terms of keeping people accountable and coaching and mentoring. But when it comes to sales, because I recognize how important that is to our business, um, it's an area that I spend a good amount of time with my team on every week. We have five sales reps. They're amazing at what they do. And our whole approach is very consultative. It's not pushy and so forth. And I'm always looking for helping them help our prospective clients make decisions. Because that's really, for me, what coaching and selling comes down to, is how do we help someone make a decision that's, that's in their best interest? If someone says, yes, I want to do this, but I'm scared, that's fine. That doesn't mean you don't do it. Right? Let's have a conversation around how we can make this work. And at the same time, if it's a hell no, that's okay as well, right? But I think sales is one of those skills. It's the most important skill I think any of us can master. So yeah, so I spend a good amount of my time on a daily basis coaching our team, connecting with strategic people on the team to help improve our product, which is actually, uh, I've got a meeting coming up in a few hours around that. Uh, some developments we're making on our HPA program to help our clients win faster, bigger, help them become better versions of themselves. Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about those small details around like where people get stuck, how to help them get unstuck. So yeah, it's uh, not so much in the business. It's more like high level thinking. I don't do a lot of like typing on keyboards anymore. It's just, you know, support, connection, thinking.
morning walk going down to the water. I do this walk pretty much every day. It's my, I don't know, I just gotta move my body, right? So every day, at least probably about five kilometer walks. It's interesting, this house has a very similar layout as ours. If you see the, if you see the picture, it's like our house pretty much. That's so funny. So this whole area used to be apple orchards 40 years ago. Our next door neighbor who's lived in that house for 40 years, 35 years, she was telling us when she was a kid, she used to walk from the lake through this area and it was just all apple orchards. I was like, that's pretty awesome. Like you would never know. It's like 9.20 in the morning and it's, I don't normally wear sunglasses early in the day. I want to get the light into my eyes, wake my body up. So this is Lake Ontario. For those of you guys who don't know where Ontario is, look it up on the map. Yeah, so normally I've got headphones in, listening to something, audio, podcast, something like that. A lot of times, nothing. Just quiet space. It's nice. There's something really magical about the water and like this endless horizon. powder I'm missing. We have chocolates, vanilla, but no unflavored. So that's gonna ruin the smoothie. So I'm gonna replace that with a copious amount of peanut butter. Gotta fuel up for the workout later. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna throw half of this out. That's what's gonna happen. It's gonna blend up and it's gonna be like two liters of smoothie and it's gonna go to waste because no one else wants any. <laughs> Yeah, we go. Crying kid, barking dog, loud blender. Welcome to my house. It's pretty good. I might be able to finish all that. We'll see. doing some work on program improvements. Uh, meeting with uh, Director of Ops, Bella, who between the two of us are kind of like head of product. So we're making some improvements on like foundational things in our program. We have one core coaching program, which everyone starts in, and we're always trying to make it as amazing as possible. So one of the things that we're realizing is that we're very tactic and strategy heavy. And then the mindset stuff and the, like, the core fundamental like being stuff kind of trickles in throughout the core program or through the main coaching program. But the reality is like, if we can help our clients with that stuff right from the get go, they'll actually become better people. Not that they're not great, but just better entrepreneurs through the whole process. So what we're working through right now is kind of revamping our onboarding process in terms of how we want to map out what that looks like. And specifically like what are the skills, traits and beliefs that we really want to uh, instill and train our clients to adopt so that they have a greater likelihood of success, not just quickly, but forever. Because the reality is like, as you know, most entrepreneurs freak out when things don't go right, especially entrepreneurs who are relatively new. Seasoned entrepreneurs, they deal setbacks, no problem. And the reason for that is because they have experience and certain traits and beliefs that a lot of newbies don't have. So we're really looking to build this out so that no matter where someone is in their journey, we're helping them become the type of person they need to become to have the results that they want. Your program delivery, it's the one area in your business so that you have the biggest opportunity for growth. But when you're starting off, like it's not really something you have to obsess about as much, like you have to make money. So you have to get good at promotion, you have to bring people in, and you're good enough as it is to start. But then as your business grows, especially beyond a million, you have to really, really obsess about the product. Because at the end of the day, that's like the best product wins. And you also have to be the best known product. So it's kind of like two things. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm just kind of got two windows open here. 
I'm just kind of fleshing out some internal documents for our team on the left. So like how to communicate this to our clients and then kind of mapping out a bit more of like the day to day, day by day type of schedule. And again, it's just a rough outline, but uh, so anyways, we're meeting this afternoon to, to go over this, to really dissect each part of it, to say, does this make sense? Is it simple? Is it too complicated? Does it fit within the framework we're trying to create? So yeah, this is what I do. This is what I do. Um, I love doing this. I love working on the product and making it better because the only reason we're in business is to help our clients win. So I will never stop until I get to a point where every single one of our clients wins. Water. Do a little uh, BCAA and creatine action. Music provided by Julian FM. <laughs> he, he will literally sing all day, nonstop. So do a five minute warm up or so on the bike here. Cause I think I'm doing a push workout today. During the world cup, I would uh, watch like 90 minute soccer matches on the Peloton. And I would try to emulate the players on my bike. So if the guy was sprinting after the ball, I'd be like pedaling fast and then he'd recover and I'd slow down. So it's fun. I just have like a sweat fest. So my warm-up protocol is increase core temperature through five to 10 minutes of biking like that. Soft tissue work like this, and then some dynamic movements, which are a bit more applicable to the actual workout itself. I work out twice a week with a trainer, twice a week on my own in terms of like heavy lifts. And then everything else is just outdoors. Tennis, soccer, walking, running sometimes. Even though I can't stand it, I do it. Cause it actually, it's the only thing that's faster than my brain. So it allows my brain to just shut up for a moment and enjoy the moment. Okay. Boogie. We are off to the gym. And by gym, it's not really a gym, you'll see. It's more like an athletic training facility, which is what I like. No fancy equipment, nice turf, squad racks, and then not a lot of people either, which is cool. Like a gym for introverts. In the famous words of Arnold, let's pump some weights and pump some, pump some iron. Go lose some weights. What's up, buddy? So we're doing some bench, five sets of five. Um, I don't even know what this is. What is this, 175, 185. I can't do math, so. All I do is lift. That's, that's all you need, that's all you need to do. I'll do just, math. just lift. <laughs> so we're in a, a strength phase, so low reps, heavy weights, so five reps. It's not really huff and puff. But uh, this is the stuff I like doing with the trainer. I can do the huff and puff stuff on my own. But this is good, it's a good push.
places. You gotta earn those. You don't need cardio when you lift this much. It's a good workout. So that was a hard workout. Lift heavy shit. It's a good way to train. We did four exercises, and I feel like I just ran half a marathon. But when you get a lot of muscle involved, man, it's just so good. I actually might jump in the pool when I get home. <laughs> just like dive in, walk out. It's just to cool down. So sometimes this is the extent of my McLaren drive. From my house to the gym. <laughs> the reason I hired a trainer is because even though I have a gym with everything I need at home, I'll get so much more out of myself working with him than just by myself. So I'm doing a mock sales call with a new sales rep that we brought on the team. So we do a couple practice calls before we let them out into the wild and then making sure everything's good. And then obviously providing feedback, coaching them, getting them trained up, and then we'll give them their first batch of calls, review those. If all looks good, they keep going. If there's major issues, they don't. So let's do this. What's up, buddy? How are you? Yep. I don't think I've gone through the whole pitch yet. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just basically piggyback on the conversation we had yesterday. So same situation. But first, we've identified three important traits that all of our most successful clients have in common. So earlier when you said, you know, you've been a physical therapist for over 10 years. It shows me that you're a real expert. So, Yuri, I know that I've been asking a ton of questions here. Um, just flipping the script for a second, switching roles. I mean, where do you want to go from here? The first one is going to be messaging. So people actually want what you're offering. We also need to get your sales up. You, know, you need to make sure that you have the skill set required to be able to convert these strangers into paying clients. So I threw you a couple curveballs. So one of them being, um, you know, it's a little bit more nuanced around like the product or the outcomes. I think you did a really good job, honestly, at handling those. Just going to the tonality, I think, again, the tonality was good. There was a couple moments where you can lean in a little bit more with conviction. The tendency is like we talk too much and ramble on because we're nervous with the silence. But you have a good, yeah. you, you have good confidence to just sit in the silence and be like, got it? So yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, got it. yeah, keep doing that, I think it's great. So it's good. So there we go, that's my day. Uh, we woke up before this morning, did some work, and then when we started this, we got our coffee. I don't even know what happened after that. Just did some more stuff, went for a walk. I uh, hope you enjoyed the workout because I'm still feeling the effects of that. Came back, uh, had two calls. Obviously, second half of the day is where I do most of my calls. And then um, just chill time with the kids. You know, obviously jump in the pool after the workout to cool down and now it's just relaxation time. So, hope you enjoyed the day, I know I did, and this just gives you a glimpse of kind of the day and the life of, of what it's like in my skin. That's about it, right? It's, um, there's no fancy bells and whistles, I'm here with the kids, building the business, and just loving every moment of it, even though it's crazy sometimes. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed it, I'll see you guys soon.